Hi folks, my name is Tom Yarbrough. Everybody knows me as Satch. I have Satch Works Auto Repair in Port Hadlock, Washington. Been here almost 12 years. We're on our 12th year here. Pretty much my goal all along has been to be a part of this community, an active part in fact. We, we support everything we possibly can here along with fixing everybody's cars and taking good care of them. That's been our mantra and our goal since day one and we've been apparently successful in doing that. The community has supported us extremely well, which I'm grateful for. I'm getting close to retirement, but I got a great guy named Ben that's taking over here. He's working with me on a daily basis. Well, 12 years ago, I'll say the economy was a little better than it is today. It was a bit of a challenge in Jefferson County. It's not easy opening up a business here. I was fortunate to find a good spot that would actually take care of all the goals that we had in a business. And so we opened up here, just my wife and myself at that time, and we grew very slowly but progressively over the years, first with one additional employee, then two, and then myself eventually in the office, and uh, now we're up to four employees, actually. And so your basic busy shop in Hadlock, Washington is what we are. We do all Asian and all domestic cars, all preventative maintenance, uh, pretty much everything to them. Unfortunately, we don't work on your European cars, but we work on virtually everything else through one ton. It's really a matter of how you run your business. If you've, if you've got customers that leave that door over there happy with the service, then you're going to be in business a long time. Um, whenever you have customers that are leaving saying, gee, I've been overcharged, or, or gee, I didn't really get the work I expected to get, it's not going to work in a small community. And, you know, that's not exactly rocket science. It's something that we figured out a long time ago. It's worked really well for us. Uh, basically, we don't let anybody out that door unhappy. We work as hard as we can on it. And I think any other business in a small community could learn from that experience. We've been very fortunate to be supported by this community. And I don't believe a business can survive long periods of time, and especially recessions, without the community support. And that's, that's, that's how we've gotten where we are today. I first showed up here in 1975. I think uh, spring of 75 officially was the first time I was here. Um, I've been working in the automotive trades most of that time. I also commercial fished for a period of time, still working as a mechanic, working for other shops. Frankly, we're here because we love the area and we love the people. Um, this is an area where a lot of folks have moved from other areas, urban areas, things like that. They're pleasantly surprised to find out that you can't live here and not know your neighbor. <clears throat> That's what makes a small community, basically. And so in the process of doing all that, you end up taking really good care of your customers. And that's what works. What we have is customers that range from every price range, in other words, folks that are on welfare and can't afford to get their cars fixed, and you're trying to help those folks, right on up to the folks that are the bank president and, and beyond. And so we work on everybody's cars here. We don't exclude anyone. Um, I know other businesses in our area that makes a point to exclude certain demographics of the area. I think that's wrong. How can you possibly be part of the community if you do that? And so we make a point to work on everybody's cars and try to help everyone we can. In the process of doing that, it's not always about making money either. It's about taking care of the community. Uh, you hear me going back and forth to the community. That's because that's part of what this business is. Well, if you go back 10 years ago, I'll say, you found more people buying new cars. The economy was up. It was doing quite well. We worked on newer cars, I think, at that time. I see in the last five years, during the course of the recession, um, there's been a lot of folks that can't afford to buy those new cars, and they're trying to keep their older cars on the road longer now. That's the single biggest thing I've noticed, is uh, people are really trying to take better care of their older cars and keep them on the road. That's good up to a point. You have to be really careful when you're doing that. You want to make sure your investment is, is wise in your vehicle. And so you get something with a couple of hundred thousand miles on it. Even though I might make money by selling you something, I'll, I'll be quick to tell you that, hey, this is not a good investment. Um, that's why my customers, they actually trust us for that. And I make a point to try to be that person they can confide in for their questions. And so I, about three years ago, I was looking for Mr. Wright to run this business. And it took me a couple of years. Uh, ben, the fellow that's in here, I believe is that guy. And that's the person I've been working with for the last three years. And I've had him in here about a year and a half now. Uh, the first year was a full-blown mentorship of how I run my business and how I would expect this business to be run if I continued to own it, um, how I would want it done, basically. And so I spent that period of time with Ben making sure he knew how I run my business. Um, now, uh, since the first of the year, 
Um, ben has been in this office and primarily making the business decisions on his own. I want to see if he can do this successfully on his own, and it's very apparent that he can. Okay, in the process of getting Ben trained for this position and having him run it all of this year, I presume, by the end of this year, we'll know if Ben's able to run this for years to come. I know it sounds like a complicated process. Most folks would just sell their business and wish him luck and hope it works. I don't think you can do that in a small community. Everybody wants to know and be able to trust the person they come to see. And um, that's a lot of what our business is all about, is trust. Ben's born and raised here, actually. He went to Chimicum School, ended up in Arizona getting his degree in automotive technology, as well as all the rest of my technicians here. Went to the same college down there to get their degree. Different times. Uh, merely coincidental that they all showed up here for that. But ultimately, um, my goal was to always have the best technicians in the area, well-educated and with great experience, and with a good leader. And that's what I like to think that I've been able to do for them. Anyhow, yes, I am in the process of turning the baton over, so to speak, uh, to Ben. And hopefully my technicians will be able to stay here for years to come. They're all family-oriented folks, kids and places. and very much a part of this community so I'm really hoping this can continue this can continue on for years to come um, time frame wise if I'm a lucky guy I'll be able to retire by the time I hit 61 which is by the end of this year we'll see time will tell if I am able to successfully retire uh, my first goal is to hit the bucket list pretty hard I've got a lot of things I'd like to get done I've spent as I mentioned 12 years in this business and that pretty much means you don't get vacations during that time frame and so we, my wife and myself, we'd like to get in our sailboat and head north, maybe spend uh, one to three months every summer uh, enjoying Canada and maybe southeast Alaska. After that, who knows? Possibly re within a retirement mode, we can go do some traveling and seeing some things we haven't had the opportunity to do. Well, photography is one of those things that's been a hobby of mine for many, many years, actually. And so that goes without saying. I'm, I'm pretty much doing photography 24-7 anytime I see the right opportunity. Uh, just this weekend, I was at the Expo here in Port Townsend and uh, taking pictures of cars and the like. And believe it or not, <coughs> giving those pictures back to the owners so they can have nice high-resolution shots of their cars. Um, that's part of the photography. Ultimately, I'm actually into bot botanicals. I take pictures of flowers, uh, natural wildlife flowers all over, all over the Northwest. Um, got some of that on my website, actually. But nonetheless, uh, photography has been a lot of fun. Other hobbies that I have, I'm a woodworker. I enjoy doing woodwork. And so I do um, beautiful interiors and boats and things like that, and along with nice stuff at my home to boot. Well, how about sailing to the botanical gardens? That works out pretty well, too. Uh, we have actually sailed up into Canada and then back down into the backside of Bouchart Gardens, where I get to take uh, many, many photos. And it's a wonderful opportunity to get on the water to boot. To me, living in the great Northwest is all about enjoying the water. Yes, we've got the Olympic Mountains, and that's great fun, too. But you give up a lot here in order to live in this climate zone. You're, you're in an area where you don't get a lot of sunshine. And you get a lot of cold temperatures in the wintertime. What we get in exchange for all of that is absolutely gorgeous summers. Um, probably the best on the planet that I've ever seen. So that's the sort of thing that I feel that people that live here need to enjoy, is they need to get outside and enjoy what's here naturally, especially during the time of the year where the weather is, is suitable for them. And that's how it got me out on the water, and that's what got me taking pictures of botanicals too is over time you go to enough places you realize the wildlife, the, uh, the natural flowers and stuff that's out there will actually overlap in time. Uh, for anybody looking to get into that, try Mother's Day. You'll find out that on an average year, Mother's Day is where you'll find all the natural botanicals are out there blossoming. It's a great time of the year. Make a point to get out there and check it out. Well, folks, we're located in Port Hadlock, Washington. It's 670 Nessus Corner Road. We do auto repair and maintenance here, and you need to come down and visit us. Have you got questions to be asked? Be sure and ask them here. It's free. Um, thank you for your time.